All right, I'm going to tell you how I get my sound. I've got an electric guitar, and I set it up totally clean and dry. Uh, this is actually the studio where I do my videos, and so uh, just for fun, I set it up in stereo. So I've got two Marshall amps. Over here is a Marshall J. TM1C, the little one watt amp. You can't see it in, in this video on the front, but uh, I put it down there. These big ones, by the way, are, are blues breakers, which I love. The only problem is that I'm so close to them that the hum from the transformer <laughs> gets in the, the pickup. So these are kind of for looks, and, and you know, if, if, if I get a gig where I can be a few feet away from it, then I'll, uh, it sounds great. But I had to get an amp a little further away so it won't get the home. So that's that's that one. On the other side, I'm actually using the speaker from the Blues Breaker, but I've got a, uh, a JTM uh, 45 Marshall head that's that's out of the. You can't see it, but it's there. So those are the two amps. Really clean. You know, that's that's just. You, it's pretty easy to get that sound from an amp. So th that's the nice thing. Now the next thing I'm going to do is add the Mojo Mojo, which gives me a little bit of distortion. Now I can play some AC-DC, you know. And uh, then I've, I've got a reverb that I leave on all the time. Hear that reverb? That's starting to feel good. And then I've got a delay. Now I'm going to put on just the delay by itself. Da -da 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 -da. Real subtle. And then I put on the, the, the reverb and the delay together, and I've got, it's not like, you know, I'm playing a, a gig now. Now that's just the Mojo Mojo by itself, which is like a kind of a, I've set it up in kind of a medium amount of distortion, so it's still pretty dynamic, and if I play light... It's, 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 it's pretty clean, so um, I like that. And then if I want more distortion, which I usually do, I've got the, the JHS PG-14, so it looks... It's, it's, it gives me a lot more... Ah, you know. Sustain... That's, that's kind of my main main sound. Then the, the other ones are um, effects that I use to, to change it. Like I have a chorus. I might speed that up a little more. Let's see. One thing I like about the chorus is to use it with a clean sound. So for that, I would turn my overdrive pedals off, turn my compressor on, and then... It's still got a little grind to it, but, it, but it's gonna... So I like the compressor for that, that clean, a little, you know, more sustained from a clean sound. Well, let's turn the distortion back on. I've got my Wawa pedal. Now, this is a special custom-made Wawa foot switch the Crybaby made for me. And that way I can turn it on and off. And, I, and I've got that switch on the side. That's really nice because if, if you're sitting down, it's hard to like uh, get over the thing with a typical foot switch. So um, I, I always put it on the board so, it, so it's, it's right by my right foot so I can actually you know, sit down and do some wah wah. <laughs> So 
that that's working really well for me. Uh, the other one is the, the mini vents. This is a great Leslie simulator. It's got two speeds. You get your, your high fast speed. <laughs> And then if you click that to the slow speed, it gradually slows down. So it starts off fast. And then it gets slow. So as you're playing, you got to manipulate that if you're going, you know. Like You know, I use that a lot on the on the record, but I love that sound. Uh, we already talked about the compressor, and I, I actually I, I just cut out a new pedal board so I could pit, fit one more pedal on there. This is Deja Vibe. Whoa, 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 real sort of acid rock. <laughs> Back to like 1970. Uh, anything else on here at the moment? I, well, I guess the other thing, of course, is my guitar. We've got an Ibanez uh, FRM 300. It's purple. It's got DiMarzio uh, PG 13 pickups in it, which really sound nice. The middle pickup is really nice for slide. It's a real warm sound. It's not too shrubbly, not you know. Here's the back. It's all right, you know. <laughs> Let me, get a, let me see what a little slide like it. Here we go. If I do that with the middle pickup. And you put a little Leslie on there, you know. Nice. So that, that's really awesome sound that I like. Uh, I'm, I've, I've got a custom uh, neodymium magnet that I've been as uh, the custom shop installed for me. You know, your pickup gets a little, or your pickup gets a little scratched up after a while, but it holds the the, the slide on there. And uh, besides that, the guitar stock. I've got a hat. <laughs> Eight. Well, you know what else? This is really important for gear for me right now. Is my action is high. Like on, on the, the the distance from from the you know, to the strings, I've got it really high because that way I get nice clear notes with no buzz. The nice thing about that too is you can you can get good sustain from your band. You know, it's not quite as much as, as the slide, but it's still pretty good. And even I found my fast playing gets a little cleaned up just when I play fast. It's, it, I, I tend to get a cleaner sound, I mean, even with distortion. It's just easier to bend them when the, when the action is a little bit high. So I use really light strings. I've got Ernie Ball RPS strings, 8 to 38. And those are really easy to bend, you know. <laughs> bend those all day and, and it's okay. And uh, I think that's just about, well, I've got you know, DiMarzio patch cables, but I do have a, a Divine Noise Coily cable, so I don't trip or fall. <laughs> and a Voodoo Labs uh, Pedal Power 2 Plus to, to get power to everything. All right, uh, oh, other thing, my stomper. It's a puckin stompa from Australia. It's actually a hockey puck, and that's what I use to keep my beat. And there, 
now we got a groove. This is one of my best sounding guitars. It's my original, and uh, I had a slide magnet put in. This is, uh, we, I had my uh, repair guy in Portland put this in. We still didn't really know what we were doing. We'd never tried it before, so we, we were trying stuff like, well, let's put a slot in the pick guard. Turns out you don't really need one of those because it's, it's, it's a magnet so strong, it you know, goes in there without any problem. But this is like one of the early prototypes of getting a magnet to fit inside the guitar. And uh, I think I used this one on, on the first song that I recorded, which was meaningful. And it's got my seven note, or no, I'm sorry, seven beat, you know, sustaining. And I, I, I just like, I actually had the amp close to me so I could get it more, even more sustained. And I probably did it on the B string. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good sustain. Anyway, this, this one, um, you know, it's one of my best sounding guitars, so I always bring it to the studio and it's and, you know, very resonant. Thank you, Ibanez. One, two, one, two, three. All right, this is the original FRM 100 with um, had the slide magnet modified. It's also the first guitar with the DiMarzio PG or no, sorry, DiMarzio PG 13 middle pickup. Uh, and I asked them to make it as loud and as powerful as possible because I, I, I like to lower that pickup down a little bit so it's, it's not as high as well, see, you can see it, not as high as the other ones. And that, that's for my pick, because I'm picking I'm you know picking that area, so if it's too high, it gets in the way. And of course, when it's lowered down, it's lower output. So to compensate, they just made it really, really loud. And it, it's really nice and warm, great for a slide. <laughs> Playing G. tones and this this one just always it's, it's a magical one I, I use this a lot on behold electric guitar and i used it on the new werewolves of portland album as well oh this is a good one let's do it <laughs> well you really need some serious whammy you know this uh this style of locking tremolo that Ibanez makes and pretty pretty nice thing to have so th this is one of the only locking tremolos that I own and uh, it's on a fireman custom made in a custom shop and I used this a bit on uh, I believe it's Hello North Dakota because I needed a sort of uh, I need one of those uh, <laughs> that's what I did with that. It's just a you know big chunky neck. So that's that's nice to play with once in a while. Thank you, Evans, for making me this cool guitar. the Kiku Sui Fireman by Ibanez one of a kind I think and uh, I, I use this a bit on the record it's real nice for slides it's such a big neck a lot of sustain I was I was worried about messing up the pickguard it's such a beautiful pickguard so I took uh, an ankle uh, like you know, if you're riding your bicycle you put the thing on your ankle so you, so your pants don't get tangled up in the, in the bicycle gears. I bought one of those. It's kind of the same, similar color. 
and uh, covered up the mag. You can kind of see the magnets in there, and uh, holds the magnet on. That way, I won't I won't mess up the pickguard. This, this guitar is too beautiful to, to mess up. And uh, cheers, con pie. <laughs> Have some of the Kiku sweet. <laughs> Yes! Alright, it's a mustard fireman, and this one has a Fernandez sustainer in it. And that's what I used for that last note on argument about pie. I'm going to <laughs> That's nice to have that. Oh, it's taken off. Uh, nice to have that infinite sustain when you need it. And yeah, a good sound on the guitar to begin with. Nice neck on these. It's, it's, it plays so well and have so much sustain. Just be back. I'm gonna go play this one. Well, look at this guitar. This is a uh, double neck micro that Ibanez has made for me in two days. That was my crazy request. I was doing the video for the song Werewolves of Portland, and I wanted to play my big double neck, and I wanted to have my six-year-old son, who's you know a little guy, uh, playing a small one. And I, I called up Ivan as I said, can you just put it together? I said, the, you know, the video's in silhouette, so it doesn't have to look good, it just has to be the shape. And you know what, I love how this turned out, because obviously they were in a hurry. They're just like, how can we put this together fast? I said, just cut it, glue it, and then later on I put some DiMarzio pickups in, Super Distortion, Super 2, Fred, Air, or Norton, so I can't remember that one. But uh, it's kind of cool, it's all in one switch. I've, I've got um, this one back here. Pretty good, I put a slide back there. Yeah. And then... Tens on it's a little heavy for me, but it's all right. Uh, one switch over is both pickups. You know. And then here we get the three string. I put three strings in octaves, so I've got three E's, and that's you can get some really amazing. <laughs> so this, this is an amazing guitar because you can go from, um, you know, your blues. To, you know, total shred. And uh, I, I think it turned out really good. Thank you, Ibanez. All right, it's a whammy bar. <laughs> This whammy bar. This is a Ibanez from the 80s. We'll see what year. 1983 Roadstar 2. I had it modified. It, 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 when I bought it, it only had one pickup, and I had uh, my repair guy in Portland put in a, a, a neck pickup as well, which sounds real nice. And uh, I like to have my volume back here. So I, uh, that used to be the output jack. We put the output jack here. This is the volume. These are, are dead. That, I don't even have those. Or maybe the tone works. Let's see if the tone works. Yeah, I guess the tone works. This this one is not wired to anything. I just put it on there to cover up the hole. And then uh, pickups like that. But mainly the whammy. Uh, I had uh, Spurzel locking tuners put on. And it stays in tune. Pretty nice. 
Let's see, what would be a, what would be a whammy thing to do? I mean, it's, a, it's I use this a lot on, uh, oh, what's that song? A thunderous Ovation, Shook the Columns. So I'm not a whammy expert, but they are a lot of fun. And man, what a nice finish on that. I think it's beautiful. All right. So, and a maple neck. So that's good. And, and 21 frets. The 20, that's enough. I don't, need, I don't need the high ones. I can't hear the high ones anyway, so I'm, I'm happy to stay in like the mid part of the guitar. <laughs> for that. Oh, look at this one. Awesome guitar this is an Ibanez EX 1500 I think it was made in the 90s but I can't tell from that serial number anyway I bought it used I had DiMarzio pickups put in and the, and the, again the Spurs little locking tuners and with that man the whammy stays in tune really well and it, you know this is fun to play around with the whammy I use this one on the solo werewolves of Portland and uh, <laughs> I, I gotta get this switch move. It's too close to the volume. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, in the future, you'll see it down here, but it, it works. But it's just hard to get to it. Well, so I'll fix that. But in the meantime, man, the guitar itself plays great. All right. Well, check out this beautiful instrument. This is Ibanez. Well, I'll get the tuner up there so you can see the logo. Ibanez artist with uh, the Active Electronics. And I think this was made in 1978. And uh, I put the slide magnet on it. And it's got that, this, this preamp and EQ. And it's pretty significant, you know. That one's pretty nice, and that's just one distortion pedal on. So um, I use this on uh, the professorship Leningrad whatever that song is <laughs> for a lot of the scary solo parts in the middle I remember that and it's just like a Cadillac of a guitar really really it's heavy but it's just worth it because it feels so good it looks pretty stylish too all right thank you very much all right this one I use for my chicka jig feels like an acoustic guitar although it's supposed to be a jazz guitar but I put the rock and roll strings on it and that way you know, I can beat up on it and I use this for some of the backing tracks behind you know the singing distorted guitar and I can sit there you know I can play that kind of Pete Townsend style and uh, I don't know if that's what Pat Metheny was thinking about, but that's what I—that's what I do on his guitar.
all I, sometimes when I need an acoustic sound it's just easier to plug it in <laughs> that's that's what I did with this Godan guitar I used it for some of the backing tracks uh, it's got a lot of control so I took tape and uh, made myself directions on what all those what all those do uh, you know because I can't remember if I pick it up it's like what is this? I, I, I made it so I can remember where the bass is where the volume is but it's really plays easy sounds great great for chords uh, so that was real nice thank you Godan All right, well, in the key of E. Oh, this is a special guitar. This is old Epiphone Olympic uh, from the 60s. It's a vintage guitar. I, I, I bought it and I uh, had it modified with two DiMarzio PG-13 mini humbuckers. I had the, the positions of the knobs changed. It's a custom pickguard that uh, my friend Ryan at Eastside Guitar put together. We side mounted the jack, put new tuning keys on, and uh, a slide magnet. And it's, it's killer. <laughs> I love this guitar. Really, you know, small neck, so it's easy to stretch out. I, I used to play guitars like this in Racer X, so it's kind of some nostalgia for me. And I used it a bit on uh, on the album. That's the that's the Epiphone. Oh, this is my favorite bass guitar in the world. It's a Rickenbacker. It's got EMGs in it. I taped the tone knob down a little bit so I wouldn't forget where it was and uh, also had a, a, a what do you call it like a bevel or a one of those contours put in so it's a little more comfortable to play and man this has got an awesome sound so I use that for, I've used this for a lot of my records and I found the trick with playing bass is to not hit it too hard that's hard difficult for me to do because I love hitting hard but I find I get a little more low end if I hit. If I hit a little softer, that brings the low end up. nice one all right it's my home studio you've got to have a computer so I've got one of those you've got to have a lot of guitars so I've got a bunch of those recently I set up a drum kit that's a lot of fun and uh, I've got this is my little practice area I've got a uh, one watt Marshall amp that's what I used for the record I also use it to practice with it at home and I've just set up a little teeny pedal board so uh, that I can get my basic sounds got a JHS PG-14 distortion pedal. That gives me some distortion. I got my vents, uh, Leslie. And a phase 100 so I can get some Johnny Winter. And then some, uh, Oh, what is that called? It's a Dispatch Master by uh, uh, Earthquaker. Without that, it's really dry. So and it's pretty dry. But if I put that on, I get some delay and reverb. That's kind of nice. This, by the way, is Ibanez Artist from 1978. Pretty cool guitar. <laughs> slide magnet on there. And, uh, so I, got, I mean, just guitars everywhere. 
recently said, oh, I, I mean, I've got a, th this I've been using recently for, for, for bass, a couple of uh, compressors. I just <laughs> run into one to boost up the signal and the other one has a compressor. Uh, the other things. Well, I, I like to have bright light to work with, so I, I, I just put a LED light with sandbag to hold in place on top and just keep it bright so I don't fall asleep. That's my studio. And there's this, I got a pedal, oh yeah, you want to hear some drums? I want to hear some drums, let's put this over here. This, I mean, you got to come down and once in a while play some you know. converter, one cable into Pro Tools, and sounds pretty good. Uh, what else is going on? I got my, you know, my bass, my turtle, somewhere around here is my cat, but I don't know, she's hiding. Every studio should have a cat. This is Juliet. She's very furry, and she will take a big uh, slice of my skin. She, 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 <laughs> she'll get me, so I can let her loose. But she uh, cheers me up as well. That's my, that's my world down here. All right. I hope you have a good time in your studio as well.